So hi, Mike Crope Hunter here again. And uh, today I want to talk about uh, polarization microscopy and specifically I would like to show you an improvised method and how you, and how you can make uh, yourself a rotating stage for a polarization microscopy. I've been experimenting around with this a little bit today. And the reason is, is because I received um, a question and I would like to share this question uh, with uh, you first and then uh, you'll understand better what the problem here is. So it goes like this. I've been teaching mineralogy in a university here in Brazil for years. Microscopy is of course extremely important. The microscopes are still missing. Now it's even worse. With uh, COVID, the universities are closed and the problem is worse. The students simply don't have access to the equipment and the situation will go on for a long time. Buying microscopes here is not feasible. The equipment costs as much as a new car. Well, um, as a matter of fact, uh, that's uh, not only the case where you're living, but generally um, specialized uh, microscopes like uh, polarization microscopes um, and uh, um, others are quite um, expensive. Um, and uh, yes, so this is a general issue. Uh, there are simply t uh, simply no used polarization microscopes here. I've searched everything, asked uh, the most impossible shops and nothing, uh, nobody has anything. It would be fantastic if you had some private microscopes that you could lend to the students with a set of thin sections of rocks. Um, for those of you who don't uh, know this, uh, what you can do is, is you can polish rocks and make them very thin um, so that you're able to mount them on the microscope slide and then you can observe the rocks um, um, under, polarized, uh, uh, under polarized light. And depending on uh, the crystals and the orientation of the crystals, this changes the polarization and then you can see color changes um, under the microscope. So uh, that's uh, why it's uh, yeah uh, polarization microscopy is, is used uh, in uh, when analyzing crystals and so on. Your video about uh, upgrading from a normal microscope to polarization microscope is wonderful, but I need an apparatus with a rotating stage without which mineralogy is not possible. Could you give me a tip on where to get a simple, cheap monocular microscope with a rotating stage that can be turned into a polarization microscope? Of course, it will not have a Bertrand lens and a compensator, but the most important things can be done with it. Thank you very much now. Thank you for the question. And um, before I show you um, the pos a possible improvised method on how to make, uh, um, um, yeah, how to turn a normal microscope into polarized microscope, I want to talk a little bit about uh, a little bit about the theory behind it first, and also give some explanation of why um, the microscopes are, yeah, uh, simply too expensive. There are several reasons, as a matter of fact. Um, Polarized uh, microscopes, polarization microscopes, um, are special not only because they have a rotating stage, and usually there are some some uh, yeah, degrees um, in, printed on the stage so that you can actually know exactly how many degrees you're rotating the stage. That would be the one thing. Um, maybe not even the most expensive uh, part, but uh, polarization microscopes they have so-called strain-free objectives strain-free optics. What does this mean? Um, this here, my microscope here has regular optics and during the manufacturing process what happens is is that the lenses are not free of tensions and strains. So during the cooling of the glass, um, there are maybe there are because of uneven cooling, um, there are tensions and strains in the, in the glass, in the glass lenses. And also when you put the lens into a casing, um, then if there is a tension on the side, then this can also yeah, cause tensions inside the lens. And the problems with the tensions are, is that it changes the polarization of the light. Um, so ultimately uh, you're kind of messing up the polarization by passing polarized light through the objective. Uh, otherwise, if, you don't, if it's not strain free. So you need special ob objectives for this besides uh, the rotating stage. And uh, polarization microscopes are kind of rare and kind of specialized so uh, these are not mass produced uh, devices and for this reason only a few companies make them especially the high-end microscope manufacturing companies uh, yeah they make them and for this reason alone they're already quite expensive and many of these microscopes these days are so-called infinity microscopes which allow you to add additional elements yeah, into the tube up here uh, in, down, down here before the light reaches the eyepiece um, there's usually a slot where you can um, add additional elements here um, and 
and this also increases uh, the price already um, and so there I think what is a, what you need here is, is you need a low-cost polarization microscope just with the bare features and I'm kind of worried that uh, this is already something it's almost uh, can, that's gonna be kind of difficult to get uh, shopping something on the second-hand market is not gonna be a lot cheaper either uh, I think uh, that might be also a problem so um, the only thing that I can suggest is is a so-called a do-it-yourself solution where you um, change a, an existing uh, microscope which is not for polarized work and adapt it in such a way that you can do basic polarization microscopy I'm gonna propose you a method here I'm not say, I don't know much about mineralogy in that sense whether it actually fulfills the needs but maybe for educational purposes it might be enough so that is uh, basically uh, the background a little bit and the second thing is, is the following um, what we need is is you we need uh, to have a so-called polarization filters and the polarization filters that I'm using um, I um, obtained uh, from uh, cardboard uh, 3d glasses um, for stereoscopic uh, viewing the problem with those is is that these are so-called circular polarizing filters and if you want to make this yourself uh, then I would uh, recommend that you buy yourself some linear polarizing filters and they're quite cheap um, I simply didn't want to have them so I'm, I'm using those from the glasses uh, from the 3d glasses uh, but I would uh, essentially uh, yeah get myself a set of proper linear pro polarizing filters it does also work with those that I have here but it's important that you get the correct orientation and what you need is the following you need to place um, the one uh, filter polarization filter beneath um, the specimen um, then you have the specimen which is able to rotate and then you need to place uh, the second polarization filter um, on top of the specimen and uh, when you place now the second polarization filter which is called the analyzer um, somewhere um, into the eyepiece this would be theoretically possible you put a yeah in here you cut out um, the, the second polarization filter and put it in here that would be theoretically possible but it's not going to work well and because uh, you have a, a prism system here um, and all of this uh, all of these optics they depolarize the light so that means um, I, if I put the polarizing filters crosswise, um, I'm supposed to get a dark image, but I'm not going to get a dark image uh, because uh, of the depolarization that happens in the optical system. So what I have to do is, is I have to place the second polarizing filter beneath the objective, beneath the optics, above the specimen. And I'm going to show you, I found actually a place how where you can do that. And then I'm also going to sh uh, show this to you. So. Um, yeah, so that's basically a little bit uh, the, the overall background here. Um, the first trial that I made uh, is uh, did not uh, work out quite well. I used a, a CD-ROM. I'm going to show you that first and then I think the second uh, system worked a little bit better. So I'm going to show you now what I've done. Well, the first try was, of course, uh, to use a CD-ROM. So I prepared a CD-ROM cover and uh, this uh, CD-ROM cover should uh, serve as a base uh, for the rotating table. I used double-sided tape uh, to connect the CD-ROM cover and then there are two CDs, uh, CD-ROMs that I taped together as well. Um, but uh, the whole system was a little bit too wobbly in, to my taste so I decided uh, to try a new more stable system using some plywood, 4 millimeter plywood and I found a lid of a glass jar which now actually serves um, as the rotating table. Yeah, so uh, using a sharp knife of course uh, is a little bit a tedious uh, process uh, so I decided to use an electrical saw uh, which has sped up the process significantly okay so now here we already see the first uh, trial um, where the center central part of the lid has to be removed uh, so I scored it and using some pliers I removed uh, a round uh, circle and uh, this was large enough uh, to accept then the light uh, from the microscope. I removed the mechanical stage. Here, these are now the polarizing filters. Um, you have to get the correct orientation. So now see, uh, this is now in the crossed uh, position. That's the way it should be. Um, and it's completely black. Uh, because these are circular polarizing filters, um, the orientation is also important. Um, yeah, I taped one of them right above the condenser. Um, I also now connected uh, the plywood um, and that's basically how it looks like. Um, of course the mechanical stage still works and then yeah for the sake of cosmetics I simply painted everything black yeah so this is basically how it now looks like um, and uh, I also um, attached a small handle um, using these uh, wooden popsicle sticks I used uh, hot glue to do that and uh, two horizontal 
uh, popsicle sticks them as a tray to carry uh, the slide. Yeah, and then basically uh, it was already uh, ready to be tested, but it was a little bit wobbly. I mean, it was not very bad. Uh, so I decided to now do the following. I cut out a little bit more and I now uh, glued some felt uh, to those uh, little extensions. And now everything was a little bit more stable and uh, could be operated more smoothly. Yeah, and that's basically then the system that I, I chose uh, to use. And uh, I generally, I was quite happy with that result. So, okay, now what about the analyzer? The second polarizing filter uh, will be placed into this covering cap of the objective. Uh, so, uh, this is actually a nice place, uh, especially for the low power objective, uh, because there is no lens there, because the lens is further in. Again, the orientation is very important here. And the advantage of this system is, is that this cap can now be rotated and this way it's easy to uh, put the two filters into a crossed position to block out uh, the light. So this is uh, yeah, actually a possibility to fine tune and to adjust uh, the orientation of the polarizing filters. And so that's basically how you do it. Simply turn the cap back and forth a little bit. Um, the other um, objectives uh, with a higher magnification, um, it might not be a lot of space there to actually put a fil filter there and you might have to uh, place it directly above the specimen somehow. Yeah, so you can uh, rotate the slide itself and uh, of course uh, also the polarizing filters. Yeah, so that's basically for the higher magnifications. I guess you have to simply put, put the filter directly on the, um, on the slide. Well, you were also asking um, where you can get a cheap and simple monocular microscope uh, that can be converted uh, to polarizing microscope, but it should have a rotating stage. Now, I think that this is going to be very difficult, if not impossible to find, because uh, those microscopes with a rotating stage uh, are for the research market and they're quite expensive. Uh, but uh, the microscope that I have here with the a conventional mechanical stage, um, I got uh, this microscope uh, from the company microscope.com um, microscope uh, without an s so it's a singular microscope.com um, and also uh, the camera I got from that company and they also have monocular versions which are of course a little bit cheaper um, otherwise they're, they're the same um, and I think this can be converted uh, quite easily and now don't laugh uh, yes there are those uh, introductory children's microscopes here I got this uh, by the way from the same company um, and this one here has the advantage that the stage can be easily de uh, disconnected because there are two screws here on the bottom okay and so you can take off the whole stage and maybe replace it with uh, a 3d printed do-it-yourself solution or also maybe a stage made of wood that has a rotating mechanism um, so especially if you're interested in using microscopes um, for education uh, then you don't the uh, students they don't need any advanced features and uh, portability and a simple to use device that does not cost a lot when you when it's broken then is actually an advantage this one here actually was less than a hundred US dollars so, so um, it's uh, quite uh, quite uh, quite nice to have those and uh, they work uh, reasonably well as well yeah, um, of course this one here is a little bit larger um, and uh, when you visit the web website then you can actually select uh, different models uh, and this one here is, uh, simply happens to be the binocular version here to check the whole system I'm using scotch tape uh, because scotch tape or adhesive tape is polarizing and I scratched it to make it a little bit uh, more interesting under the microscope. Um, and I also have a, a vitamin C. So this is crystallized vitamin C that I also prepared. Uh, but let's look at the sticky tape first. So this is uh, how it looks uh, like um, in polarized light. I can rotate of course the stage and you see how the colors are changing this way. Um, so that is, uh, of course, uh, the whole purpose uh, of a polarizing uh, stage, of a rotating stage, so that you can uh, test out different uh, angles um, of polarized light. Um, and uh, yeah, um, and uh, you can also, of course, uh, try to change now the rotation of the filter in the objective. Okay, and now you see that the colors also change here. Yeah, so that is, I'm now changing 
the orientation of the analyzer which I put into the objective. Yeah, so um, at least uh, with uh, sticky tape, uh, the color changes are quite uh, notable and can be seen uh, quite well. So uh, and uh, here um, as a second uh, place here, here there are several layers of uh, sticky tape overlapping. And uh, here too, um, I can change everything now by the colors by rotating the analyzer in the objective. See how big the colors. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, washed out now because of the high light intensity. Yeah, and by rotating it, uh, by rotating the stage, you of course also get the color change. If it's not, it's not quite centered, that's why it's uh, not going in a perfect circle. So that is uh, basically, uh, this was pretty much uh, the, the sticky tape. Um, and uh, the next thing that I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to show you now the vitamin C, uh, which is um, also quite interesting and looks a little bit different, of course. Yeah, here are the scratches of the sticky tape are quite well visible. So, okay, now that is vitamin C. Uh, and I now need to adjust uh, the analyzer again. So I'm rotating the analyzer in the objective. And uh, look uh, what happens. The background becomes dark. I have to wait for the camera to ex adjust the exposure. Um, and uh, that's basically what you see here. Um, and that's uh, one of the nice things here is, is that uh, the system is quite easily adjustable. Um, the crystals are a little bit small. A higher magnification would not be bad. And now I'm rotating again the stage. And here the color changes are not quite as visible as with the sticky tape. Yeah, but I think you, you get the idea. Unfortunately, I don't have any polished uh, mineral samples uh, of rocks. <laughs> this would be interesting as well to see. Yeah, and now I'm, I'm using the mechanical ch a stage to move the slide back and forth and focusing, of course. Yeah, so um, I have uh, quite a yeah quite a bit of control over the whole thing, and I'm generally I'm quite satisfied. Yeah, so now I changed again the analyzer. So I think uh, this should be enough uh, for right now. You can see that the whole system works quite well. I hope uh, that it also works uh, when you try it out at home. I do have a, a second uh, uh, so solution here, a second possibility. Um, there is, uh, there are these uh, more or less low-cost uh, USB microscopes, uh, and what you might want to try as well. And I don't know if this is actually fulfilling your needs, and as well as this is the following: you can uh, actually uh, take a lamp, lamp, an LED lamp, uh, and uh, put a, basically a filter directly on the LED lamp. Then to put the specimen slide on top of it, glue. Um, over here the second polarization filter and try to take a picture like this and by rotating uh, no well this one has to be rotated in such a way that it's cross polarized that the two filters are, are crossed um, but then by rotating the slide you might also uh, be able to improvise uh, you know, yeah, um, a system I can imagine that maybe this uh, would be suitable if you want to project something um, maybe on a large screen uh, for classroom demonstrations I can imagine this might also work not tried this yet um, but uh, this would be also a very low cost solution here. So that's enough for today. Um, I wish you all the best. Leave your comments below. Happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye bye.